This is the brand new ZWO camera angle adjuster. And in this video, I'm going to be showing what you get in the box. I'm going to be installing it on my setup here. And we're going to have a little bit of a play around and see how it works. Now, for transparency's sake, I just want to say that I, have, of course, bought these camera angle adjuster myself at full price with my own money. And I have not contacted ZWO prior to making this video. So they have had no say in the creation of this video. Okay, let's do a quick unboxing just to see what ZW have put in the package here. Opening it up, we get the camera rotator itself. We're going to come back to this in a second. We have another adapter plate. I'm going to come back to this as well. We have this, which I assume is going to be cables. Nope, this is definitely cables. Okay, so angled USB-C here on one end and USB-A on the other. And for those wondering, this is, I don't know how long this is. I would say this is about a meter, about three feet long. So if you're wondering, that's it. Put that there. And then we have a quick start guide. Okay. Let's take a look at the rotator itself. So anodized aluminum body we can see down here have markings showing the scope and camera size so we know which way it goes and um, the scope side here has a m40 sorry m54 thread on it here and that is of course the um, the fixed side this is the non-rotating side the other side here comes default with this plate which is also m54 but as you saw we got this here so if you need it you have the option to unscrew these six screws, put this in instead, and this converts this side, so this is the camera side, from an um, M54 down to an M48 thread instead. So we can replace that if we need to. What else do we have? This side here, we have USB-C. That's, of course, where our USB-C cable goes. And then there is a HC port. This is for the hand controller. So you can buy an optional hand controller if you want to adjust this manually. If you don't want to connect it to like an um, ASI Air or another computer, then you can just connect a hand controller here on the side. The only other feature that's worth mentioning is this tiny little hole here on the telescope side of it. This is a, um, a lock, basically. So if you... Um, Let's say that, that you have an adapter on here, you screw an adapter here, and you have a really hard time getting it off because you basically just keep rotating the, up, up, um, the, 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 the whole assembly. That'll be on this side, I guess. So this side is just rotating as you try to take an adapter off. You can't get a proper grip. You can put a hex screw in or a little hex key in here, and that will basically lock the rotation of it so that if you have an adapter on here you can't get off, you can lock the rotation get the adapter off and then remove the key, then it can once again spin freely. That's a nice little addition, I think. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, I think, all there is to this box. Let's go get a telescope or camera and uh, let's try to assemble this. So here we have my um, ASI 2600mm Pro attached directly to a filter wheel. This is the seven slot um, filter wheel. And all the ZWO filter wheels should use M54 um, threads. So we should, in theory, camera end, just be able to screw this in here directly into the filter wheel. There we go. I think that should be fine. In case you're wondering with this gap here, uh, there is a small, tiny gap. You can actually see it on this plate here if I... I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but with this here, there is this small ledge here. So this outer edge here is playing with the surface of it. And then this lifts up like just a millimeter. And that means there is a tiny air gap between the, um, between the filter wheel and the rotator. So they don't scrape on each other. Okay, there we go. So now we just need to make sure that we get our back focus correct. And if I am not mistaken, I think this is a 16 millimeter, 16 and a half millimeters it adds. Okay, let's do a bit of calculation here. So we need 56.8 millimeters of back focus for this specific um, field flattener. Then we had the two millimeter um, 
um, adapter here to uh, to step up from uh, from 58 or from 54 to 58 from from 48 to 54 okay then we have the rotator itself which is 16.5 we have the um the field wheel which is 20 millimeters and then we have the camera itself which is 17.5 and then i need to add 0.6 millimeters for the filters because they are 18 1.8 millimeters um, thick so we need to add that and that gives us an additional back focus of 1.4 millimeters Let's zoom in a bit but down here if i screw this out a little further you might be able to see it here there is a little scale that i can see how much additional back focus i'm adding here on the back of the back focuser so i need to get this to 1.4 we keep this in place and we lock it in with this ring here like so there we go that should be correctly adjusted back focus now fully assembled rig with everything here i just unscrew this cover unscrew that cover put the whole thing together and we're ready to image okay here we have it fully installed and everything is connected up as it should let's just go ahead let me put you guys down and let's go ahead and play with us first step of course is we need to go in here to the menu and we need to go and select the camera angle adjuster and turn it on there we go so you can of course turn on here we can set the calibration data rotation so that it um, you need you want to turn that on if you have an off axis guider basically because as the camera rotates so will your guide camera I'm not using a off axis guide. I have my guide camera up here, so I'm not going to turn this setting on. Other than that, let's see what else we have. We can ask it to beep when it rotates. Sure. I think that's actually off by default. I turned it on when I was playing around with it. But all we can now do is we can take this angle here. I can set it where I want it to. And now I can click rotate. And if we're lucky, there we go. It now rotates. But of course, rotating this manually is obviously not what you want to do with this. You want this to be automated. So the way we can do this is we can go in here to plan mode. And if we go in and let's create a plan for something. Four by, I don't know, we're just going to make a big mosaic. Four by four. And we can, of course, also set the rotation angle for our entire mosaic here. So let's say we want something like that. I don't know. We're just going to play around with this. Now, if we create the plan here. One of the new features that got added with the ASI Air uh, update that came together with the CAA here is that now if we go in and look at the plan, we can also look in at the individual frames here. If we click details, we can now see that the angle is also listed. But most importantly, we're now able to change it. So let's say I want to change the panel and say, oh, I want this to be like, I don't know, 200. Oh, oops, 200. There we go. Um, you can go and change the um, the angle of individual panels and also more importantly these angles are going to be saved as part of the plan they weren't before so look if we go in here to the plan now and we jump to uh, to our panels here you can now see that one panel there in the corner that i rotated manually in in previous updates or previous before this update the angles of individual panels would always be the same as your current camera angle. So you would plate solve, it would figure out your camera rotation, and that would just be the angle that the panels were at because the camera angle was not stored as part of the plans. They are now. So regardless of what your current camera angle is, they are going to now slew to that panel and also rotate the camera, of course. And this is where, of course, the big benefit of something like this is where you can now rotate and trust me as someone who's been trying to do mosaics before getting those angles correct is a pain to do manually um, i've had way too much trouble with that especially when you're shooting over multiple nights it's a quite a bit of a pain so having this i think is is awesome and especially now because you can also store these information as part of the plans but of course even if we're not shooting plans if we're just in normal preview mode and let's jump back to uh Let's jump back to uh, Andromeda here. Um, we click center here. Of course, now I can still set my uh, my rotation that I want my camera to be at. And if I now clicked go to, it would of course now go to that location and also rotate the camera correctly. Now, while I am pretty happy with my purchase, there is a few things that I wish ZWO would improve on the camera angle adjuster. Luckily, it's all software related, so it means that they can potentially fix it after the fact. 
at the time of this recording, uh, the camera angle adjuster is not able to compensate for field rotation if you're uh, shooting with a alt azimuth mount. It seems like a thing that it should, in theory, be able to, um, but it's just not available as a um, as an up, as a feature, at least not when you're running it with a um, with an ASI Air. The other thing is after you've done a meridian flip, the camera angle adjuster will turn your camera 180 degrees. The course does this to make sure that you maintain the same framing and that the, the, the images won't get turned upside down after the meridian flip. And you might think, why do you want that to change? Well, the problem is, as soon as the uh, adjuster rotates the camera 180 degrees, that now means you need to shoot two sets of flats for that night. And that also means you need to stack two sets of flats, you need to separate your frames out from before and after the meridian flip and handle those separately. It's a bit of a chore and I would actually rather prefer that it that I would be able to just shoot one set of flats and it wouldn't rotate them. And then after I'd done all my pre-processing and calibrated all my images, then I could flip the ones after the meridian flip so that they will all have the same way, uh, the same rotation before doing the final stack. There has been some talk in the astrophotography community that this is a feature that ZWO is currently working on, basically allowing us to choose just a little button you can set inside the SIR that says, flip uh, the, the camera after meridian flip, yes, no. And that would be perfect. You can choose whether you want it or not. Um, I haven't been able to confirm whether this is 100% the case that they are working on it, but I've seen some talk about it on uh, on various um, astrophotography communities. So hopefully this is a feature we're going to see come to the ASI Air in the near future. This channel is financed through the sale of my book, The Cosmic Field Guide. So if you're an astrophotographer, you must have this book. It has bunch of handy graphs and tables you can look up darkness plots so you can see when the, the sun sets and when you get into the different levels of darkness all this information that we need when you're out in the dark when you're planning your shoot is in one handy book it also has a bunch of challenges that you can use so if you're looking for something fun to try and do astrophotography in a different way and to try different things maybe get into new types of astrophotography then this book is absolutely for you the challenge is divided into different um, like uh, difficulty level. So even if you are a complete beginner or if you're an expert, there's going to be something for you in that book. Go check it out on deepspacebooks.com. It's just a box. It has a bell jack that we can connect in here on the side of the ASI Air. Even though we're in the city and there's a lot of light in here, the moon is just so bright that you're not going to be able to both get the moon, get the 